Good morning to you on this Monday, August 29th. On behalf of the Dean of the Cathedral, Randy Hollerith, and the entire Cathedral staff, welcome to this service of morning prayer wherever you are. My name is Stuart Kenworthy, and I have been a priest in the Diocese of Washington for over 30 years. It is a joy to begin a new day with you in this way. Thus says the High and Lofty One who inhabits eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the High and Holy Place and also with the One who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please pray with me. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading appointed for today is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood in the midst of them and began to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unfolded the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has, has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. That he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do here also in your hometown the things we have heard you did at Capernaum. And Jesus said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow in Zarephath of Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha and none of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might 
hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through their midst and went on his way. Here ends the reading. Over decades in parish ministry, I have had countless exchanges and conversations with people at every stage of life who were searching for God, faith, meaning in their lives, and a desire to find a place, a community in which to discover and encounter God, that God would become a deeper part and even the center of their lives. Most of us, and everyone to some degree, whether articulated or not, are searching for peace, joy, happiness, purpose, and meaning in their lives. God, in and through the church, is always inviting us to come closer, to go deeper into the mysterious, ineffable truth and splendor of God and Jesus Christ. It is in and with God that the deepest longings and hopes of our hearts can be met. I believe it is the Spirit of God that brings you to the threshold of longing, that is to listen, to see and make the way for you to open your heart to God. If you want a map for this journey, look no further than Jesus, whose own desire and led by the Spirit was to draw ever closer to the Father. Three distinct and related events show this path for Jesus and the pro procession to go deeper. First, in about the 30th year of his life, Jesus was led by the Spirit to John the Baptist in the Judean wilderness. There he went for a rendezvous to discover and affirm the deepest purposes of his life for God. Secondly, emerging from the waters of baptism, Jesus was led into the desert wilderness where in a severe testing gained clarity about his own identity, who he would be and not be, and who God was calling him to be as Messiah, the anointed, the Savior. The third event took place in his home in Nazareth, entering the synagogue. The Hazan led the community to prayers, and there Jesus stepped forward to read from the scroll of Isaiah. The Spirit of God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor and bring his sovereign rule to all people. Handing back the scroll, he sits. There is silence, not a sound, but pitched expectation. Stunning the assembly, Jesus says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Sometimes when God acts, language collapses. The room is silenced. Something extraordinary is happening. They cannot take their eyes from him. Jesus is saying, I am the one for whom you have been waiting for a long time. The waiting is over. His words are the foundation and fountainhead from which every word he will speak, every healing, exorcism, parable, and miracle will be understood. God in Jesus is bringing justice and mercy to the world, not vengeance, not just to his chosen people, but to everyone and beyond. For Christ was sent to all people. He was sent for the whole world. It is this that I invite you to fix your gaze upon this morning, to contemplate and behold and accept as God's 
self-revelation that Jesus is the Son of God and in him is the way and the truth and the life which God offers to you today. So receive him into your heart. Accept him in faith. He is the living God, Jesus Christ, who longs to come into you and become the center and meaning of your unique and beloved life and soul. Amen. Please join me in praying that which Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we offer these prayers for the church universal, for all her leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the leaders and peoples of Ukraine, Russia, Tunisia, Italy, Somalia, and for all nations in distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the lonely and infirm, the widowed and orphans, the unemployed and the destitute, prisoners and captives for our loved ones and neighbors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who are sick or distressed, who have asked for or are in need of our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God and for the salvation of our souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, who has brought us through the darkness of night to the light of the morning, and who by thy Holy Spirit dost illumine the darkness of ignorance and sin, we beseech thee of thy loving kindness to pour thy Holy Spirit into our souls that we may ever be devoted to thee, by whose wisdom we were created, by whose mercy we were redeemed, and by whose providence we are governed to the honor and glory of thy great name. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all beloved to you this day and forevermore. Amen.